Oh, cool. When you start up the game, it puts you into the location where you first... That's cool. Oh, I love that. I love that a lot. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome back for some more great Ace Attorney Chronicles. I mean, every other time I was just in the courtroom, so I thought it was normal. That's cool. That's really cool. Well, now that we're here, let's check the special contents real quick, because this has been on the menu, and I know you're usually supposed to, like, hold off on that. Okay, accolades. These are our achievements. So we got complete episode one for having uh, successfully presented evidence during the first cross-examination that occurs in... Bo oh, well, I mean, I didn't do it in the second one. Prime Presser. Examine the report card. Oh, I don't want to read about these. I haven't been looking at them. The Tailor. Alternative outfits. Uh, these are only in the second one. Oh, uh, we can get... Little outfits here. Steampunk Victorian outfit. Shomes' Japanese jumble mix. Oh, okay, that's cool. You get to do like swap in their 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 ones. So I know escapades are like the DLC short stories. Um okay. Yeah, we're not gonna deal with those. Gallery, auditorium, all annotations appear in their original form. Voice recitals. Objection. Oh, that's fun. That's a fun feature. I'm happy that that's there. Cool. Okay. We'll deal with that later. But for now, let's continue with our investigation as we can now leave the room. Which is, you know, actually surprisingly important for a closed room murder. Alright, so we can head to the first class passageway. The passageway connects the first class passenger, uh, first class cabins on the SS Bria. Let's get out of the cabin. Okay. Sorry, is that a mouse trap down there? Is that a mouse trap from the famous board game Mouse Trap? The board game that I never played with anyone but tried to assemble myself and always failed. Ugh, I'm finally out of that cabin. I have to admit, this isn't quite oh, I have to admit, this isn't quite what I was expecting. It's less spacious out here than I thought it would be, and this is the most luxurious accommodation. Yes, indeed. Kazuma Sama was being sent here on this study tour by the government. That's why he was being put up in a first-class cabin. Even still, this is about twice as large as my accommodation in steerage. Really? Oh, that must be awful. Oh, look over there. There's another crewman keeping watch, and he looks enormous, even if he is sitting down. The door next to him leads to the second-class accommodation. I suppose he's making sure that no one comes in here who shouldn't. I suppose... Like, people in handcuffs? Narhodo-san, you look like a little boy visiting a toy shop for the first time. I would have thought you'd be used to the ship by now. We've been at sea for two weeks already. Well, yes, I know. But the thing is, I, I was inside Kazuma's trunk when I first came aboard. And ever since then, I've been shut up inside that little wardrobe. It must have been a very trying time for you. Please, don't give me that pitying look. Okay. Well, the first thing I want to do is examine. It's not what I wanted to examine, but alright. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. The one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Kazuma Sama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe who was ever in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. It's not what I wanted to do. Oh! Uh oh you are large and also navel showing. What is with your stripes, buddy? I saw that in the cutscene, and I was wondering if, like, that's intentional or if he got, like, hit or slapped or something. But no, I think that's just his character design. Oh, um... Excuse me, we, um, need to get inside this cabin here. Okay. This sailor's eyes speak volumes. They're clearly saying, keep out. Well, that's what I wrote on the sign we put over the wardrobe doors. Although this man's version is definitely more effective. It doesn't look like he's going to let us pass. Hmm, that's a problem. Well, I wanted to go over here. I forgot that you actually have to, like, use the stick. What? What? Yeah, what? Ah, a trap for catching mice. Yes, we have plenty of those back home in Japan. Although they seem to be using a lump of chalk or something as bait. Let me see. Yes, I think that's what is called cheese. It's made from the milk of... I never even considered 
that cheese is an invention that Japan wouldn't have until the traders brought it over. Cheese? I wonder what that tastes like. Wow! I kind of assumed most of the world just kind of developed cheese at the same time, but I guess that would be like a European thing. You can't eat it, Naruhoto-san. The trap will snap shut on your fingers. Really? But... <laughs> I suppose you're right. You weren't actually going to try it, were you? All I've had to eat for the past couple of weeks is Cosmos leftovers. You don't know how hungry I've been in that wardrobe. Or you. I'll find a little snack for you. <laughs> Just a little snack, as a treat. Oh. What's with this alarm? What do you think this is? It's a very pleasing shape, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I guess. That's the emergency alarm. It's probably best not to touch it. Oh, an alarm. It says, press only in times of emergency. It looks as though it sets alarm bells ringing all over the ship and brings the vessel to a complete stop. Oh, this I have to say. What are you doing, naruhoto san You mustn't touch it. But this is an emergency situation. Just look at these handcuffs. You know full well that's not what the alarm is for. If you were to bring this vessel to a standstill for no good reason, you'd be in an even worse situation. Uh, I wish everything would just stop. The ship and Oh my god, buddy. <laughs> He's having a moment. If you have to do something foolish, at least make it something that doesn't affect anyone. Oh my god. Jeez. Okay. Oof. Map? This looks like a plan of the SS Borea. It shows each deck. Look. Uh, the Burya is a large-scale steamship with a triple-skinned hull. What a marvel of engineering. Well, it's been playing on my mind for a while now, actually, but... How is it that such a huge lump of metal doesn't just sink to the bottom of the ocean? Oh, that's really quite simple, Naruhoto-san. Uh, it is? Well, consider the Japanese archipelago. Sorry, what? The islands of Japan? Yes. They're not metal, but they are enormous lumps of earth, many, many times larger than the ship. And they don't sink, do they? They've been floating happily in the sea since the gods created- Oh. Do we tell her? No. Let her believe. Well, I suppose so. Okay, well, I guess that's what they're going with, huh? Protocols! That's a huge book on top of the table there. There's a pen next to it. Yes, that looks like the ship's log. Should I have a little, 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 little look through it? The writing is so neat and precise, every detail of the voyage has been meticulously recorded. Mm. You wouldn't expect a rough and ready sailor to have such beautiful handwriting. And nothing. No reaction at all. I thought he might appreciate the compliment. I don't think he speaks Japanese, bro. I'm not sure that rough and ready is much of a compliment, Naruhoto san even to a sailor. Anyway, last night's log is mostly blank. Presumably that means there was nothing to report. Hmm. So immediately my brain's going, oh look, here's the pipe. And the pipe goes into what seems to be our room. Like, I'm, I, I can see that there. Door? That's the way to the second class area of the ship. Is something wrong? I was thinking about making a run for it. Just for a moment. At least he's honest. Things aren't exactly going well for me. I might be wrong, but I imagine the moment you reach for the handle of the door, that burly seaman would surely shoot you dead. With a gun? Or just his musculature? Oh dear. I'm sorry. Perhaps I went a little too far there. No, I started it with my talk of running away. And there's no way I could run away while Cosma's death remains a mystery anyway. Alright. Um, excuse me, but could I ask you something? You? You little stowaway murderer! That wasn't a good start, was it? Alright, let me try instead. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps ask something of you? 
You? You little third class lady's maid? Oh. We seem to have caught this sailor on a bad day, Sasada san. I am not sailor. My mother gave me name. I am senior crewman. Beef strong enough. Yeah! My man's name is Beef Stroganoff! Freaking love Beef Stroganoff. What a delicious dish. Sorry, Biff. Biff Stroganoff. Freaking 10 out of 10 name. Ah, best thing is just to avoid eye contact, I think. Are you, are you added to the record? Biff Stroganoff. A real wall of a man and senior member of the Russian crew's turned to security. Interesting the other sailor wasn't part of wasn't added, which is suspicious. First class cabin area. Um, Mr. Stroganoff, about the first class cabin area. Here we are in finance part of Burya steamship. For very important persons. What sort of imp very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret. Many important persons. That is why I am always guarding this place. Gosh, that's amazing. But somehow, I let stupid stowaway inside. He has kind of beautiful eyes. I want to pick you up and throw you in ocean. But Stroganov is not animal. Thank you. <laughs> if I may, I was wondering, is the cabin next to Mr. Asogis currently occupied? Da. I'm guessing that's da. I'm I'm ninety percent certain that's da. Um, Sasada-san, did you understand that? It sounded like da. Yeah. Okay. I think it's probably Russian for yes or no. Genius. <laughs> it is not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Oh. Well, it sounds like there's somebody in the next door cabin at least. Yes, it's tantalizing. Alright. Well, let's start with last night first. What happened last night? Um, are you on watch here all the time? Seaman? Oh, no. Not Seaman Stroganoff. No! No, I want beef. I want beef. I don't want the juices. I want the beef. Seaman Stroganoff. Shut up. They know what they're doing. Duh. Old time. So criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is sad about student boy. Were you on watch last night as well? Of course. And did you notice anything at the time? Look, I just noticed he has like a fish, a fish uh, shaped tie there too that's that's a really cute little character design thing anything unusual hit or is, it, is that is that neat um susada san do you understand that it was clearly a no yeah that's neat i saw nothing unusual nothing at all you didn't hear any strange noises or sense anything wrong in some way? Why are you looking to the side? I said no. Sorry. I'm not so sure. I could have sworn that he couldn't catch my eye for a moment there. Yeah. What's up, buddy? Could you tell us who's traveling in the cabin next to Mr. Sogis? His name is Mr. Grimsby Roy, Roy Lutt. He's a very important Western gentleman. Grimsby? I mean, Grim? Grimsby? Gr Grim? I don't know. Like, that's the only thing I get for that. A Western gentleman? Do not think about it. He has nothing to do with murder of student boy. How can you be so sure about that? Mr. Roy Lott is an authentic Western gentleman. Such a man would have no interest in lowly student from insignificant Far East Islands. Well, that was harsh. Could you tell us when Mr. Roylet came aboard? That is not your business. Come to think of it, even though we've been at sea for two weeks now, and I've been in Kazuma's cabin the entire time, 
I've never once heard anything from the next door cabin, or even felt like there's anyone there. Well, presumably, since this gentleman is occupying one of the first class cabins, he must be rather important, is that right? That is not your business. Mm. This is enough. I cannot say more now. Oh. It is time for me to report to Captain. You must return to Cabin. Yes, all right. Bulk into second class areas, staying locked at all times. You escape when the lobster whistles on top of mountain. Or as English say, when the pigs fly. Oh, when the lobster whistles on top of the mountain. That's a strong one. Yeah, I understand. Good. Now we can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. We're breaking the rules, we're breaking the rules, but no one can stop us because we're already in trouble. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours, the one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Kazuma-sama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe who's ever in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. It's gonna be no one, huh? No answer. We're out of luck, it seems. There's no one in there to help with our inquiries. How annoying. Ah. What was that? It came from inside the cabin. Oh, that was not, okay. Such a high-pitched scream. It must have been a woman. Stand aside. Oh, stand aside. I'm about to break the door down. Mr. Sholmes, I shan't be stopped. When the fit is on me, I revel in kicking doors off their hinges. Please, wait, Mr. Sholmes. The door doesn't appear to be bolted. It doesn't. Then how the deuce can I dispatch this muscular urge? What prey can I... <laughs> I, I think we should go in. There's no time to think about stress relief. I forgot that he's just here. 9th of January, the SS Buria First Class Cabin Number 2. Oh! Oh, it's you! Oh, jeez. Wait, you look a bit different. Yeah, no. You look different enough that I think you're not the same one. Who are you? A Western gentleman. This man looks Russian to me. We, we heard a woman scream. A woman? Don't be absurd. As you can see, there's nobody but me in this cabin. True, this old man does appear to be the only one in here. But in that case, who just screamed? Get out, all of you, now! Please excuse the intrusion, but... You're Mr. Grimsby Roylott, I believe? Yes, that's me. And you are? I am the one and only, the actual Herlock Sholmes. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. I'm a great detective among great detectives. One who adorns the covers of pop covers of popular magazines, no less. Ha! Huh. So I assure you, you may trust me completely. The man used that magazine like a business card. A detective? Hmm. I do not trust detectives. We distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these walls. But there wouldn't appear to be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So might I be bold as to ask you to open that small traveling case? What? Don't be stupid! How could anyone fit in a small trunk like that? Huh. Well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk. Don't look at me. Please, don't. Oh, look at that. Oh my, did, did you see that, Mr. Narhoto? Yes, the case just shook. Leave now. Otherwise, I'll call the steward. So this is Kazuma's neighbor, Mr. Grimsby Roy Lott. 
There's no doubt about it. The strange Russian man is hiding something. I couldn't agree more. Let's see if we can find some clues before that burly sailor returns. Why are his stuff at a different angle? What are you doing? What? Why would you? Are you just being a little silly guy? Well, first off, uh, obviously, what do you think you're doing? Uh, this is my cabin. Get out. Could we just have a quick look inside your traveling case, perhaps? No. <sighs> what a pity. I think we're out of luck. I think you're right. There doesn't appear to be anything more we can do. I agree. But there may be someone else who can help. Perhaps that great detective could get somewhere with Mr. Roylott. Okay. Right. Oh, oh, it's gonna be the same. Okay, so so there every everything is currently you can't do anything. Shoutouts to holding the B button in Phoenix, right? Is it everything gonna be like that? Oh, pretty much, yeah. That's fine, apparently. Um, do you have a moment, please, Mr. Sholmes? Oh, I didn't mean to click on him, but. You need only address me as Sholmes. That's what I, I, I just did, isn't it? Well, um, Mr. Sholmes, uh, what were you doing in there? Why, I was resting, of course. Resting? Indeed. I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time. That you would need to call my great powers of detection into service. Oh! And it would seem that the hour is upon us now. The time has come. Am I mistaken? Well, um, no. Actually, you're... You're spot on, for once. Observe closely. Our Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Roylott, is clearly trying to hide something. And you know what is the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? Why? The truth, of course. Though it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Right? Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he guards so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? Oh, yes, please. Well then, what you're about to see may well astound you. For I'm about to apply my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. What are you going to do, buddy? Could this man be a more hackneyed portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? From time to time, it occurs to me. Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness, or Russian on account of his dubiousness? Oh my god. <laughs> I, I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you or anyone. That's right. And Mr. Sholmes, are you racist? Uh, would that be racist? I don't know. I know this man's dark a beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting, but I once read, it is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. Shh, I must have complete silence. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Why are you peering at my face like that? Ah, just as I thought. Yes, I have quite made up my mind now. Oh, wait, are they stowing away the girl who was being fled from the thing, which I completely forgot about? This? The prima ballerina? I forgot about her. I don't trust him. There can be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. Mr. Roy Lott, I've reached two incontrovertible conclusions. What? What do you mean? Number one. Your true identity is that of a villain. Using those sheeners, you are about to end the existence of something most dear. Are you not? <laughs> and number two, the other conclusion I've drawn, you are, at this very moment no less, in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. 
Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you realize you have been discovered. Does it not? Ugh. Oh, Narhoto-san, I never imagined I would witness one of Mr. Shom's great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction? Nothing can deceive Mr. Sholmes. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. What, but, what ineffable twaddle! Oh my god, Ryanosuke breaking up the dictionary for that. Oh yes, I've read about it countless times in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And now I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction firsthand. This is like a dream come true. I can hardly believe it, but all the color is drained from Mr. Roylott's face. It looks like somehow both of Mr. Shum's conclusions were right? How? How could you? How can I possibly know such things, you wish to say? Very well, then. I shall elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So I do I cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. Uh, put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. <clears throat> oh, whoa. The great deduction. The game is afoot. Oh my god, yes. Topic one. Old man's identity. This is amazing. Oh, did this a whole gameplay feature? So, the dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roy Lott, obviously what catches the eye in the first place. Guys, the shears. is the enormous pair of shears in your hand. Oh, what's that in the other pocket then? Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us right in the face. You're on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you sport. That's apparently not true. Now moving on. The question then begged is this. What would you desire? Why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Roylott? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper, in particular, the fascinating front page article. Which it would appear you have read also, Mr. Roylott. Yeah, I noticed that. I'm not I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. In translation, the headline reads, Revolutionary Villain Bolshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. As you can not fail to observe, the subject of this article po possesses an extremely copious beard. But he's a different nose. Yeah, maybe, I guess. Having noted the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the fearsome Russian revolutionary himself, villain Bolshevik. Not that I've heard of you myself, you understand. Conclusion. A revolutionary on the run. Topic 2. Wrongdoing. Now, as for my second conclusion... Huh. You are at this very moment on the brink of committing the most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime over there. Wait. Oh yes, Mr. Roylott. Taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. Oh, he said over there to make him glance over there. But I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. Huh. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, that traveling case. And not the giant one in the corner. It is time, I think, that the case be opened and its contents laid bare. No, I refuse. Huh. What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask? By my estimation, a young lady, perhaps. One slight enough to fit therein. Ha! Huh. Don't don't be absurd. And what, pray, would be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coop. Oh my God, coop! 
Ku do do. I hate that word, but that means eyes in French, right? He means like coop of the eye. It's it's oh oh. How do you say it in French? That means eye, right? Yeah. How do you say it? I I hate this word. Hey. Oi. Ku de oi. But that means like like a coup of the eyes. That's a that's amazing. That's so good. But I hate that I can't pronounce oi. Ku ku de oi. It's so good. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. I love the localizations of Ace Attorney games so much. Yes, the reason you refuse to open your traveling case can be equally found in the pages of this newspaper. For there is another, most stimulating article. If we turn from the fling revolutionary to the back page. Huh. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us to only but one conclusion. Your crime is that of an abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavo Pavlova. Kidnapping of a young ballerina. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this Russian enigma. <laughs> Elementsky. So I'm guessing we got to break that down to fix all the mistakes he made. So Sato san that wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Well, um, the stories are full of Mr. Sholmes' brilliant deductions, you know. But that did seem a little different somehow. Excuse me, Mr. Sholmes, could you, um... Come over here for a moment. Pray, what can I do for you? It's about your deductions. Would you mind? Not at all. Go on. Well, to start with, there's the newspaper article. I think we had the same discussion before, but... These two men look nothing like each other. Ah, yes. I recall our discussion earlier. At the time, I believe I told you that the man is a revolutionary, well able to revolutionize his own appearance. In fairness to Mr. Sholmes, Miss Roylott does look more like this man than you do. That's not the... that's not the point. And another thing, the part about him abducting the ballerina. Indeed, a truly startling rev revelation. At first glance, the case would appear too small to accommodate a young woman. N not, not just at first glance, it is too close, small, clearly. Like, she'd have to be, like, wrapped up or something. You'd be lucky to fit a five-year-old child in that case, even if you pushed really hard. I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? I mean, you don't know. Ha-ha! <laughs> no, the young lady is 15. No, I didn't know. How could I? Hmm. Well, if she's 15, then 10 years worth of her would be poking out of the case. <laughs> Some years ago, I read something pertinent, I believe. A troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain litheness in their bodies. Vinegar. For such a sour bunch, it would surely be simplicity itself to contort oneself into the confines of that small case. Oh dear. You might be thinking of contortionists in the circus, Mr. Sholmes. Uh, this whole thing is turning into a circus. Mr. Norhodo, something's occurred to me about Mr. Sholmes' deductions just now. I think his powers of observation are, well, magical. His eyes cut to the heart of the matter almost instantly. It's just where he directs his attention and logic that seem a little off. Your idea of a little may be a little off itself, Miss Susato. It's just one or two key words in his deductions that seem to let him down. So I was wondering if we might perhaps tactfully switch them for alternatives. What do you think? Switch some key words in his deductions? Yes, but very tactfully. I feel sure if we could do that, we'd unlock the true genius of Mr. Sholmes' great deduction. Precisely the thought that was going through my own mind. 
This man is a lot of work. At times, I wonder how anyone puts up with me. <laughs> it's not that funny. Uh, you, my good fellow. Sorry? Take a moment to look at your wrists. My wrists. What? Huh? Where are your handcuffs? How? How did... I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me in our, well, dance of deduction. I don't believe it. Mr. Sholmes, you are a marvel. Huh. And don't worry. I shall restore the shackles to your wrists when we are finished. I'm not worried. In fact, I'd rather stay like this. <laughs> so, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Oh, yo, course correction? Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. All right, revolutionary on the run. So the dubious looking Russian Mr. Roylot, obviously what catches the eye in the first place. So can I, can I provide evidence at a time? Let's see here. Can I, can I present? I don't think I can, okay. Okay. Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You are on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you sport. All right, yeah, okay, here we go. Mm, I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? I doubt that's something I'll ever have to worry about. It doesn't quite sit right with me, though. It doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Roy Lotta, either. Which means, I suppose, the deduction is wrong. Let's try to switch a keyword here, Naruhoto-san, and see if it helps with matters. All right, but how? I think we should start by taking a long, hard look at Mr. Roylot. What if it's really his beard that he intended to use those shears on? Exactly. If we do manage to find something that seems to fit the sense of Mr. Sholmes' deduction better, then what? Well, then I'll leave the rest in your capable hands, Naruhoto-san. Why am I the one to do something about this? Well, anyway, let's see if there's anything we could even use to switch around in that last sentence. What exactly was Mr. Roylot really going to use those enormous shears for? Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, my God. That's crazy. What the? What's this? It it looks like a cascade of stunning golden locks. No, no, no. The color's not the point. The point is, what's it doing on the back of Mr. Roylot's head? And how is it growing from underneath his thick black hair? Well, yes, that's true. So it's stunningly beautiful and stunningly surprising. Something's definitely not right here. Uh, yeah, cut the hair. Whoa, that's cool. Oh, yo! You are on the verge of using the shears to cut away the golden locks you sport. Indeed. You have identified the precise detail I was intending to expose. Oh, shoot. Okay, never mind. We know exactly who this is actually going to be then. Such lush, golden hair certainly does not befit an old man. You're not a man at all. You're a woman. And judging from the length and sheen of your hair, one's still very much in her youth. Oh, oh, oh no! <coughs> if only I'd managed to cut off my hair, no one would have suspected. She's putting on a voice. The question then begged is this, why would you desire to rid yourself of these magnificent locks? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Huh. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity, an article about the revolutionary. Nope. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea the old man was really a young woman in disguise, did you? What? Why are you staring at me like that? Like, did, did you hear her voice? Yes, it was a surprise, Narhoda san You're enjoying this, aren't you? Uh, sorry? You look like you're in your element as you dance around the room deducing facts with Mr. Sholmes. I'm just doing what we agreed. I'm I'm not having fun or anything. This is strictly business, not strictly come. Is that a strictly come dancing joke? Cause it, wow. Wow, that's a reference that is very British, and I only know because of my British friends. Yes, yes, I understand. Say no more. We 
wait, is that even a thing in this era? Or wait, was that a was that a was that a phrase? Strictly come dancing. Is that a phrase? Is it was it a phrase before it was a British TV show is the question. That's my question here and I don't think I'd be able to I I don't think I'd be able to uh let's go phrase. I don't think I'd be able to google it. Um strictly come dancing. Let's see here. Mixture of BBC's long-running ballroom come dancing and the show Strictly Ballroom. So maybe not. Okay, I guess not. Huh. Strange. It's the amalgamation of the titles of 1992 Australian film Strictly Ballroom and Come Dancing. So never mind. That's just a strange reference. The evidence he's picked out doesn't fit the facts at all now. No, that's true, given what Mr. Roylott is actually a woman. Exactly. He, or rather, she, can't possibly be this merciless revolutionary. I suppose it's because the deduction as a whole is taking a different direction now. And also, by the way, this is one of the reasons why I kind of, I like the fact that Ace Attorney is mostly unvoiced, because you get twists like this, which would be completely, completely impossible to do. I mean, unless they just use a different voice, but in with voice acting, there is fun to be had with unvoiced characters. Yes. Let's switch the evidence for something else. Something that fits the facts as we now understand them. For some reason, this woman needed to try and hide her true identity. Feels though I've either read or heard about a young woman in a situation like that recently. Alright, I'll do my best. That is clearly this. Yes! Yeah. Huh. The evidence that reveals your true identity is, of course, the article about the- So they, he took off the things just so that we could use our hands in this, and then he's gonna put them back on. That's really funny. The evidence that reveals your true identity is, of course, the article about the ballerina. That's right. You've hit the nail on the head. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Ooh. It would appear that we are finally able to address you by your true name. Yes, because your true identity is that of the Novovich Ballet's prima ballerina. Ha. Huh. Miss Nikolina Pavlova. Ah! Woman voice. <laughs> that was silly. <clears throat> Dang. Dang. Wow, you rock. Wow, okay. I wasn't expecting her to. Wow, you're kind of cute. You're right. My real name is Nina. I mean, Nikolina Pavlova. But please, I beg you, don't tell anyone. I'm not. That's not a Russian woman voice. What am I doing? Ballerina on the run. All right. Well, obviously, it's not the kidnapping now. This is all going to be very wrong. Now, as for my second conclusion... You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing the most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime? Over there. So... Is she just gone now? No? Okay. Oh yes, Miss Pavlova. Taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. Ah. And I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, that traveling case. Okay. This woman is the ballerina, and she's right in front of our eyes. So clearly, she can't be inside that traveling case as well. No, that's right. It seems she wasn't abducted at all. In which case, what is the crime this young woman is committing? <sighs> I can see I'm gonna have to step in and fix the great detective's mistake again. You seem to look pleased, naruhoto san Do you like the idea of another chance to dance around with Mr. Sholmes? Stop it. Anyway, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. Oh, 
Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. I didn't even see that. It's the tiara. Because we know that it's expensive. Wow, look at this dazzling tiara. I've never seen anything like it. Are those real diamonds, do you think? Oh, naruhoto san try it on. What? Me? Isn't it usually girls who wear tiaras? Wouldn't you like to try it on? Oh, no. I couldn't possibly. It's far too beautiful. Why does this tiara look familiar? I feel like I've seen it somewhere recently. What's yes. that? Tiara! I didn't check the trash bin. I failed the Ace Attorney most important rule. The proof of your crime is surely this tiara. Uh, I believe I believe this tiara is worn on stage by dancers in the Novovich Ballet, is it not? Indeed, it would appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in this newspaper article. And if the reporting is to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rubles. In summary, the crime you have committed is theft. Oh no. Yes, you left your ballet troupe unlawfully taking the precious tiara with you. Ah. Cute. She looks a lot, though, like a lot, like uh, Colin from uh, Street Fighter V. I mean, it's the same sort of thing and everything, but I wonder if she has an alt costume that looks like this. Like a color scheme, at least. I have no one. No family. No friends. I am alone. All alone. And I need money. But I did not steal the tiara. It was a present from... Uh, how do you say? An Earl of Prussia. It, it belongs to me. This girl is only 15 years old, and she's run away all by herself. She must have been extremely lonely. All right. I will tell you everything. There is no point to hiding it now. Come, come. Let us not be hasty. What? There remains one unsolved mystery about you. Mystery? What, what do you mean? have staunchly refused to open this traveling case of yours in our presence. It is reasonable to conclude, therefore, that there exists some reason why you wish it to remain closed. Is that not so, Miss Pavlova? Um... My dear girl, there's no sense playing games with me. Nothing escapes my attention. Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case, even before I've ever laid my eyes on them. Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup d'oeil, the the oi, oi, I hate that word. Like, oi. That's how you pronounce O E I L is oi in French. But it's such a good phrase. Like I honestly, someone at the localization team was like, yeah, this is so good. Your careless coup d'oeil betrays you. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason why- why is that one bronze now? The reason why you refuse to open your case is written on the books and books on the shelf. He's completely changed tack with his deduction now. I think Mr. Sholmes is adapting his logic to the changing circumstances, don't you? Uh, maybe, but why has he suddenly brought the bookshelf into all this? It's just a wild guess, surely. Oh, do you think so? Well, it doesn't seem likely that the reason this young woman doesn't want to open the case would be reading a book that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, that's true, but still. Miss Pavlova certainly did cast her eyes in that direction. I noticed it myself. There has to be another reason why she won't open her case. And it must be somewhere in the same area if that's where her gaze was involuntarily drawn. I agree, that's the only answer. Whatever she has hidden inside that case should be revealed by following her gaze in the direction of the bookcase. Uh, 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 small picture? What's the picture? This is a charming little picture, isn't it? Of what? What is it? Someone climbing a steep mountainside? Or descending one, it seems to me. When you've been on the flat sea for a while, maybe you start seeing hills and mountains and everything. Rules of passage? Oh, is it going to say no pets? 
These are the rules of passage for travel aboard the SS Burya. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. It's so like the same notice in our cabin, too. I wonder what happens if you break the rules. Oh dear, I'm sure the punishment would be severe, Narhoto-san. You'd probably be left adrift in the freezing cold ocean, or shut inside a tiny wardrobe for days on end. Well, I've actually been serving time for weeks now, have I? That's it. It's a pet. I mean, we could also check this, too. Uh, looks like these are all the same books that we have in our cabin. Suppose the steward likes to make sure passengers have plenty to read for the long voyage. And have you noticed how all the books have fallen over, just like in Kazuma-sama's cabin? It's almost like someone's taken a sweep at them. Maybe Miss Pavlova? While she was practicing her ballet? Anyway, the point is, we don't have time to look through all these books at the moment. We couldn't even if we wanted to. They're all in Russian. Well, that's a relief. Let's try our luck elsewhere. That's clearly this. Yes! Rules of passage. Rules of passage! Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Inside that case of yours is something forbidden from the from carriage on this vessel. That is the real reason why you refuse to open it, thus revealing its contents. I... As we've seen, the trunk wobbles from time to time, but no weapon or other dangerous item would move of its own accord. Which leaves but one possibility, Miss Pavlova, inside your traveling case. Yo! The bros! Yo! Oh, this is so good! Is a last item listed as a for it's forbidden in the vessel's rules of passage. A pet. Ah! Uh. Please don't take these noises out of context. I've made enough noises people could destroy me with soundboards if they wanted. Possession of a prohibited animal. Is gonna be a snake, though, is the question. Deduction complete. Elementary. That's fun. That's cool. I like this feature a lot. That's a really good feature. That's a good gimmick feature for this one. So clearly, you aren't who you said you were. No, I am not Grimsy B. Roylot. My real name is Nikolina Pavlova. Everything you said was correct. You absconded during one of your ballet company's performances in order to escape your homeland. Later that same night, you stole aboard this vessel. Which couldn't have been easy. The Burry is a huge steamship with a vast crew. Could she really have snuck on board without being noticed? In order to obscure your true identity, you somewhat recklessly took the guise of an old gentleman. And you intended to sever all links with your past by severing your long hair. Why did she scream then to begin with? Yet to a woman, hair is no trifling matter. My personal recommendation is to leave well alone. So, if it was just you about to cut off your own hair, who was it that let out the scream we heard from outside the cabin? That ver veritable tinkling of a bell, why none other than this young lady, naturally. More like a full set of pipes, if you ask me. I was so scared when I ran away in Shanghai. I was sure they would come looking for me. And that's why I decided to, uh, how do you say, disgust myself so no one would recognize me. As a result, you transformed yourself into that questionable old man? I see. I put on the fur hat and fake beard. Then, just before you came in here, I saw in the newspaper, right on the page, there was a picture of me. Oh, she saw it and screamed? I was so frightened, I couldn't stop from screaming. I knew that if I didn't change my appearances completely, they would find me. So I decided to cut all my hair as fastly as possible. I picked up these scissors in my hand and... At that precise moment, we walked in through the annoyingly unlocked cabin door. <laughs> he really wanted to kick the door down! Things happen like that sometimes, don't they? 
Things do indeed happen like that, from time to time. As some people say, it is what it is, but sometimes I wish it be what it not be. Are those two even talking about the same thing? There's just one more thing I'd like to know. What exactly do you have inside your traveling case? It's gonna be a snake. You were right. It is my dear friend inside. My only friend in the whole world. Please, don't tell anyone. If the captain finds out, if you say to any of the crew... Your secret is safe with us, I assure you. But in return... You must tell us in as much detail as you can muster about the events of last night. Yes. All right. I will tell you. Well, Mr. Narahodo, wasn't it something, Mr. Sholmes' great deduction? It was certainly something, yes. I'm just not entirely sure what. But at least Miss Pavlova has agreed to tell us what she knows. That's incredible. Indeed, it is incredible. Ah, uh, and one more thing. Oh, yes, what? Observe your wrists. My... Oh, damn it. Your hands are cuffed again. What? But... But how? True to my word, I have restored your shackles. When and why? <laughs> There's... There's still a shadow of guilt cast over you, Mr. Narhodo. I'm sorry to say, it can't be helped at the moment. Ah, oh, Shikatanai. Can't it? Really? Anyway, let's listen to what Miss Pavlova has to say. I can't go on, go on not knowing. I have to find out what the speckled band that Kazuma-sama wrote about in his diary really was. Well, first off, we can do a bit more examining now. Right? Yeah. Let me see. Don't touch! Huh? I will tell you what I know about last night, but please, you must not touch my things. I... how do you say? Forbid it. Oh, sorry. As you well should be, young man, what vulgar manners you have. Poking around in young lady's private belongings. Neither shall I allow it. Uh, hypocrite. Hypocrite, then. <laughs> Hypocrite that you are. I love that phrase. I want to dig through her trash. It's not living if I'm not digging through trash. Oh, without the hat. But also without the earrings. Huh. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's talk, then. Well, first off, very important thing. Check out my sick badge. Um, can I show you this? I'm actually a university student from the Empire of Japan, you see. That means nothing to me. No, why would it? <laughs> Mr. Narahodo, if you're determined to flaunt your Yume badge, at least choose a Japanese person who might recognize it. Mr. Sato, can I show you this? Maybe later. Oh, I could show Inspector Hosunaga too. <laughs> I love it. Um, did, can you read this? Miss Pavlova, would you take a look at this? I don't know. I don't know anything. Mr. Narhodo, you're frightening the poor girl. Oh, sorry. I wasn't trying to. I do want to see if she recognizes this guy. Miss Pavlova, about this article. Yeah, do you know about him? Did you know about this merciless revolutionary already? No. But when I saw the picture, I couldn't believe it. He looks just like me in disguise. Huh? Am I the only one around here with eyes? The other man, the one wearing the brown, he also said so. He said we looked the same. Yes, he says a lot of things. <laughs> but I have a strong feeling that besides you and the great detective, you won't find another soul in the ocean who thinks there's any similarity there at all. Mr. Narhodo, I won't allow you to speak ill of Mr. Sholmes. No, no, I wouldn't dream of it. That's funny. You know anything about a speckled band? This is the diary of my friend who passed away. His diary. 
Yes, and he wrote in it last night before he died. Something a little unusual. It reads, 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. And then, oh right, the whistling. Then a few minutes later, 1.35 a.m. It looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? I don't understand. It's strange, isn't it? But the ventilator he mentions joins to this cabin, you see. It's up there on the wall. In other words, this cabin and the victim's cabin are connected together. Oh. Miss Pavlova? Has something occurred to you? Does the speckled band the victim mentioned mean any something to you? Or the whistling sound, perhaps? No. I don't know anything. Oh. Interesting. Does this say wardrobe? Nope. She doesn't say anything. Okay. Uh, okay, well, let's talk to her then. What happened last night? Did you know that someone was killed in the cabin next door to this one last night? One of the crewmen told me this morning when I was eating breakfast. The man who died, well, he was a friend of mine. Oh. That's why we're trying to find out what happened. Did you notice anything unusual last night? Perhaps you heard a strange noise, for example. Perhaps people talking. Perhaps the ship was absorbed in a wild tempest. Perhaps its steam engine exploded. Perhaps everyone on board would have noticed if that had happened, my friend. Miss Pavlova, is there anything you can tell us? I don't know. I'm sorry, but all I could think about last night was what I had done and whether they would find me. I didn't notice anything that was happening around me. Oh, I see. Why are you running away? You've run away from your ballet company, haven't you? The Novovich Ballet? Yes. I'm traveling to Great Britain, and from there, I want to go to America. I will never dance again. I want to forget everything about the ballet. I will start a new life. You wish to forget? A challenging proposition. When you have that striking tiara as a reminder. But that tiara is mine. I needed to live. I have no money of my own. The Novovich Ballet gives us only a little food and water, and we must dance all over the world. I had to run away. I had no choice. If I stayed, it would have killed me. So you ran away to protect yourself? Yes, and the crew of this ship, they have all been kind to me. They let me come on board, and they said I could hide in this cabin. Oh, that is indeed the truth, Miss Pavlova. It creates a most intriguing conundrum. Yeah, because then they wouldn't be... Why would you need the disguise if they were fine with it? Yes, it does. What do you think about it, Mr. Narhoto? Me? Oh, well, yes, of course. I think we should hear Miss Pavlova's explanation. It's one conundrum, I'm not sure, but... Let's go to Fred first. So the friend you mentioned is inside your traveling case, is that right? I don't think animals are allowed on board according to the rules of passage. Oh, please, don't tell. Don't tell any of the crew if they found my precious... Then the Berlin Russians would bestir themselves in unison to throw you and your case overboard, no doubt. Ah! So reassuring, Mr. Sholmes. What sort of pet is your friend? A little puppy? It is, isn't it? Maybe an adorable little rabbit? Huh. You credit Rush as a land with small rabbits, do you? Oh, don't they have small rabbits there, then? You may well ask. Hoo-ha! Huh. I have no idea. Huh. You two are miserable bunglers. <laughs> Bungler! Bungler, bungler, bungler. Oh, Frick, is it Bunger in there? She opens it up, and there's a little Bunger in there. It's like, look at this! Bunger, 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 bunger. You two are miserable bunglers when it comes to understanding the nature of young ballerina's friends. Isn't it obvious? It must be a chicken. Really? 
Consider the benefits. A rousing wake-up call, daily fresh eggs, and when adversity strikes, it could satisfy the needs of sustenance. It can also run a business. It can, it can get stocks. So many stocks, you see. So you'd eat your friends. I'll remember that. Nope. Well, it would appear this friend's identity is a closely guarded secret not to be revealed. Ha 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 ha! Ha ha! She obviously doesn't quite trust us yet. Alright, the conundrum. Miss Pavlova, allow me to pose you a riddle. Mm hmm. According to this newspaper, it was only yesterday that you absconded from this ballet. Now, that being the case, it must have been last night that you boarded this vessel. However, the SS Burya stopped by no port last night. Oh! Oh! Yeah, that's it, of course! So how is it, pray, that you came to come aboard? Now that I think about it, the crewman outside the cabin acted very strangely when we mentioned that. It was just after we asked him about when the occupant of this cabin came aboard. That is not your business. Okay. Yes, you're right. He did seem to be hiding something. Hmm? An angel descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to the stage. Uh, sorry? What was that? It is how the Russian newspapers described one of my performances. And that is how I came here, too. I descended from the heavens, because I am an angel. Hmm, okay. That doesn't give us any answers. Considering English isn't your mother tongue, your description- Oh, are we- are we speaking English right now? I assumed we were speaking Japanese. Oh, but no, that wouldn't make sense, because Holmes is speaking- Oh, yeah, no, we're absolutely speaking English. Considering English isn't your mother tongue, your description is very vivid. Wow, we learned English very quickly. Mr. Sholmes once said I can never resist a touch of the dramatic. It seems Miss Pavlova is the same. A genius descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to detection. Words once said about myself. Quote from a wonderfully extravagant advertisement for the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, in fact. Yes, yes, Mr. Showy. Anyway, it doesn't seem like Miss Pavlova is going to tell us what really happened. Dang, okay. Oh, Rutro! Excuse me, Mr. Roy Lott. Yes, what? Wow, she's fast. Captain would like to speak with you. You must come to Captain's quarters at once, please. All right, I will come now. This is fake voice, don't worry. What? You must leave, now. Oh no, it's fine. Don't mind us. Yes, please don't worry yourself, Mr. Roylot. Get out! The passenger said out. Do you want me to throw you out? <sighs> Looks like we'll have to leave investigating his cabin until later. What a pity. And so we lost our chance. Having still not managed to investigate Miss Pavlova's cabin, we were unceremoniously chased out. That is to say, we were quite literally picked up and thrown into the passageway outside. Oh. Well. Oh, frick, to be continued, I was going to say, what a perfect point to stop there. Okay. Are we going to court now, or is there going to be more investigation? Are we on investigation part two? It is investigation part two. All right, guys. Investigation part two. We will continue with the adventure of the Unbreakable Speckled Band next time, guys. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you then for some more great Ace Attorney adventures. Ciao.